If you're learning how to code and you're noticing that there's a lot of bugs or errors thrown in your code, chances are that you don't fully understand how scoping works. This is a rather complicated topic in the concept of programming, and when JavaScript's involved, it's even more complicated because JavaScript has additional layers of scoping that most other languages don't. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down exactly what scoping is, how it works in JavaScript, what those additional layers of scoping are, and how you can use all of this knowledge to write less bugs and better code. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. And before we start diving into any of the really complex scoping topics, we first need to understand the basics of how scoping works inside of JavaScript and how it works in pretty much any other language as well because it's essentially the same. So as you can see here, we have a really simple function called print age. It takes in an age variable, prints it out to the screen, and you can see here we're calling that function and passing in 29, and you can see it's printed out 29 to the screen. Super straightforward, our code is working just fine. And this is actually using scoping inside of our code. And that's because this age variable right here inside of our function is actually scoped to this particular function. And what that means is that that age variable is only accessible inside this function. If I tried to do console.log age outside of that function, I'm actually going to get an error. You can see on caught reference error, age is not defined. And it's because this age variable is not defined anywhere inside of our code, it's only available inside this function because that's where the variable is defined and where it's used. So in the most basic terms, anytime you create a section of code or a block of code, that's the more technical term, this would be something like creating a function. Or maybe you have an if statement and you have some type of code inside of there, or maybe you have a while loop or a for loop. Anytime that you essentially see curly braces like this, that is creating a brand new block. And now all your variables defined inside that block are only accessible inside of that block and they're not accessible anywhere outside of it. This is even easier to see because you can actually write code like this where you just have these curly braces with nothing else and that will create a block for you. So everything inside of there is only accessible inside that block. This is the same exact thing with functions. When you define a variable for a function parameter, or if I try to define another variable such as is programmer, I'll set that to true and we'll just come in here. We'll say is programmer. You can see now it's printing that out. If I get rid of this console log here, 29 and true. But if I try to come in here and console log that is programmer outside of this very or this function, you can see I no longer have a reference to it because it's not inside of this scope. So at the simplest high level scope works where variables are only accessible inside of the curly braces that they're defined within, and they're never able to be accessed outside of those curly braces. But the other really important thing to understand about scope is you can actually access things that are defined outside of your curly braces inside of them. So you can access things defined outside of your current scope inside of your scope. So let's take a look at that. We can take this is programmer variable and we're gonna make it a global variable that is accessible entirely everywhere inside this file. Now I'm just gonna comment this line of code out and we're gonna give this a quick save and you'll notice that it works. And that's because scope is always allowed to look outward, it just cannot look inward. So when we're in this function called print age, what's happening is we have our age variable defined directly inside the function. That works just fine. And this is programmer variable, we notice there's nothing that defines is programmer inside these curly braces. So what JavaScript does is it says, okay, go to the next level higher than me. The next level higher is this global scope. And it says, hey, did I define is programmer here? And sure enough, the very first line defines it. So it uses that value. So it's always looking inside of itself and then it's constantly going up higher and higher one level at a time until it finds the variable that it needs. And most importantly, since this is a global variable, we can actually use it right here to print out true. And as you can see, it's printing out true just fine. So in a high level overview again of what's happening here, we can access things inside of our scope and things that are outside of our scope, but we can never access things that are nested inside of the current scope. So let's take a look at this real quick. We're gonna add in a simple if statement that says if true, and I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna create a variable which is just going to be called first name. We'll set that to Kyle, if I can actually spell properly. There we go, so now we have this first name variable, and if I move this up into here, I can console log that first name variable as well. If I clean this up a little bit, you can see it says 29 true and Kyle. It's logging out all that information. And if we take our first name, move it outside this if statement, everything still works because we're in this if, which is its own block of code. And it's saying, okay, I have an age variable that's not defined. It looks up and finds it in the previous scope above it. Same thing is programmer. It finds it all the way up here in the global scope. And first name, it finds it in this functional scope that's directly one level above. But what happens if we create a brand new variable inside of here called first name and we set this to Sally? You'll notice that if we save our code, there's absolutely no errors at all that are being thrown and the name is being set to Sally instead of anything else. 
Now, if you've worked with JavaScript or any other programming language before, you'll know that you can't have two variables with the same name. If I move this up to right here, you'll notice I immediately get an error since I have two variables with the same name. The only reason this works is because these variables are at different levels of scope. I have this level of scope here, which is my print age function. And you can see I've defined my first name at that level of scoping. And then we have my if statement, which is the next level of scoping and I've defined first name there. And since these are two different levels of scope, I can actually have those variables in both of these places. And the way the code works is it's always going to use the one that is the most inner level of scope. So as you can see here, where I call this console log, it's looking inside of its scope first and it finds this first name is called Sally. So it uses that one right here. Obviously, if this didn't exist, it would then move up to the next level and find the first name here. So if you have two variables with the exact same name, it's always going to use the one that has got the most inner level of scoping. Now, everything I've talked about may sound really confusing to understand, but really the high level thing that you need to know is that the way scoping works is you can always look outside of your current scope to find things that you need, but you can never look inward. So for example, in print age, if I were to try to console.log first name, it's going to print out Kyle. And that's because it cannot look inside this if statement to figure out what the first name is. And if I don't have a first name defined, it's going to throw an error because it, again, it cannot look inside of another scope. It always must look outside of itself. Even if I put this after the if statement where my first name is defined, I still get that error being thrown again because it cannot look inside this inner scope. It can only look on the outside of itself. And as you can see, there's nothing outside of this defining first name. Now I mentioned at the start of this video, how JavaScript is a little bit unique because it has a lot of different levels of scoping that most other languages don't have. And that's what I wanna cover in this next section of the video by talking about all the different scoping levels that there are. And the easiest way to see this is to actually do some more advanced debugging. And if you're not familiar with debugging concepts in JavaScript, I'll leave a video linked in the cards and description that I go over a crash course on everything you need to know about debugging. But essentially what we can do to figure out what all the different scoping of our variables is, is just throw in a simple debugger statement right here. I'm gonna give this a quick save and immediately what's going to happen when I do that, I'll even move my camera to the other side of the screen so it's kind of out of the way for you, is that I'll pop up on my side of the screen, it'll stop my code immediately where I call debugger and we get a bunch of information on this scoping section talking about all the different scopes that we're interacting with. Now with most languages out there, you're gonna have like three different levels of scoping that you need to worry about maybe even only two. You essentially have your global scope, stuff that is available to every single thing in your entire application, and then you have your local scope, and that's the things that are available only locally with where your actual code is running. In JavaScript, we have a few more concepts than that we need to worry about, but I'm first gonna be talking about local scope and I'm gonna be talking about global scope. So inside of JavaScript, your local scope is generally going to be referring to the function that you are inside of. So in our case, that is the print age function because that's what we're inside of. And if we look at our global scope, you can see that we have this age variable being defined and that's because that's being defined right here inside of our print age function. If I were to come in here and I were to define another variable, we'll just call this other, and we'll just say that its value is other, and I were to just refresh my page, you can see now in my local scope, I have age and other being defined, and that's because those are both inside of my print age function. They're in that level of my function. Now, the next thing we wanna talk about is global scope, and global scope is essentially all the things that are accessible everywhere inside your application. If we open up our global scope, you can see that we have our window object here, and that has every single thing that's on the window property inside of our code, and you can see it's everything like that is being accessible everywhere. Now, in our particular code, we actually have nothing at all that's in this global scope except for our print age function. So if we actually scroll down to the P section of this, we're almost there, we should see that print name function or print age. As you can see right there, we have print age inside of this global scope, and that's because it is accessible every single where. If you create a function essentially at the highest level like this, that's going to be global scope. Now, if we minimize that global scope down, you'll notice we also have two other levels of scope called script and block scope. So script scope essentially means that is a variable that is accessible anywhere in your script files. So if we look in here in our script scope, we have this is programmer being set to true. Now, the reason that this is available in our script scope is because if I create a brand new script file, we'll just create other dot js inside of here and we'll make sure that in our code we actually import that file other dot js we now have access to that is programmer variable inside of here i can do a console dot log of is programmer and i'll also say other just so we know this is coming from our other scope 
And for now, I'll just comment out this debugger, make sure our code runs. And if we go to the console, you can see it's printing out true and other. And that's because it's actually running this other.js and it's able to access this is programmer variable, which is accessible anywhere that we have a script file at all. So that's what that essentially means. So now let's come in here, add that debugger back so we can go over to our source and you can see that's where our script is being run. But the next thing we have is our block scope. And the block scope is a little bit interesting because it's only a scope that you use if you have a const variable or a let variable. If you define a variable using var, it actually does not show up in the block scope. And that's a bit of an interesting concept. So if you don't understand the difference between let, const, and var, I have a full video covering that. I'll link in the cards and description for you. So you can go over exactly what those different variables mean and how they interact with each other. But essentially let and const can be used inside of a block scope, such as right here inside of these curly braces for our if statement. So overall, to kind of take a general look at all the different scopings we have, we have first our block scope, and that represents everything inside this if statement, because that is the current block of code that we're in, and it has our single const variable, because it's using const or let, it is able to be scoped by the block level. That's why we have this right here. Next, we have our local scope, and that is every single thing inside of this print age function. And as you can see, we have our age variable as well as our other variable, because those are both things defined inside of our print age function, but they're not defined anywhere else, such as inside this if statement. They're not nested further down. They're at this particular level. Then the next thing we have is our script scope, and that's everything that's accessible in all of the different script files we have. And as you can see, we have is programmer is the only thing there. And then finally, we have our global scope, which is where our print age function is defined. Now there's one other level of scope that we haven't talked about yet, and that is the module scope. So if you're using modules inside of JavaScript, so for example here, instead of defer, I change this to be type equal to module, whoops, module, there we go. And now I give this a quick save, come over here, you'll notice that now instead of a script scope, we have a module scope. And all that means is that these variables are only accessible inside of this particular file. So this is programmer is only available in this file and nowhere else. You'll notice if I actually let my code run and go to the console, I'm getting an error is programmer is not defined when it's trying to be accessed in this other file, because I'm inside of a module scope, which means I can only access this particular variable in the module or file that I'm working in. So that's kind of the difference between script scope and module scope. Module means it's only available in the particular file while script scope is any script on my page. And if you're unfamiliar what this module type means, I have a full video covering this concept of modules. I'll link it in the cards and description for you. Now the final kind of complicated thing we need to understand about scoping is how var is a little bit different than let and const. For example, if I change this to be a var variable, and let's actually change back to our normal scoping here, we're out of the module scoping. So I'll just give that a quick refresh. And you'll notice that no longer do we have a script scope. There's no script scope anywhere on our page. And that's because this is programmer variable is actually in our global scope. And that's because var always uses the global scope when it's like this. So if we go into our global and we search for is programmer, you'll see right here we have is programmer true inside of our global scope. And that's because var uses the global scope. Same thing down here. If we change this first name to be a var variable instead, and we give this a quick save, come over here, you'll notice now we no longer have any block scope. And instead in our local scope, we have our first name. And that's because the way var variables work is it actually takes the variable that you have and it moves it to the highest level of the current function that you're inside of. So instead it essentially treats like you have a variable like this equals undefined. And then it's just renaming that here to first name equals Sally. That's essentially what this code is doing. And to show you how that's actually working, if we let this finish out and go to our console, and we just make sure we save this real quick. And let's actually remove this debugger statement, give this quick save. We'll go to our source tab, make sure we have that all finish out. And you can see here, everything is being printed out perfectly fine. And it's actually printing Sally right here. And it's again, because of the weirdity of var variables actually being hoisted to that top level. So when you're using var, you essentially remove a certain level of scoping. But I wanted to talk about the differences with var because they do have a pretty strong difference between how they interact with the different scopings that you have. But for the most part, if you're using let or const, you can see that we have those different scope levels. If we come in here, bring that debugger statement back, give that a quick save. You'll notice here now we have our block scope, our local scope, script scope, and our global scope. Now I know I've covered a ton of stuff related to scoping, some of it very basic at the beginning of the video, and this stuff at the end much more advanced. The important thing to understand about scoping is just knowing that scope essentially works inside out where you always start at the most inner level and work your way out until you find the particular variable you're looking for. And if you don't find it, then it's going to throw some type of undefined error. That's 99% of the time all that you need to know about scope. 
And also, if you enjoyed this video and you actually learned something new about scoping that you think will actually help you in your code, I highly recommend checking out my full JavaScript course because I essentially do what I did in this video, but for every single JavaScript concept out there. So you can know every single thing that you ever need to know about JavaScript to make sure that you master how to build projects and you're able to build any project you want on your own. So if that sounds interesting, I highly recommend checking out that course. I'll link it in the description for you. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.